So we got the 331 spoilers, and this chapter is an amazing sequel to an already incredible chapter that we're coming off of. So let's get into it. The chapter begins with Star being thrown backwards by the impact of the explosion. She says she doesn't understand why Shigaraki's hair suddenly grew. So at the end of the previous chapter, after Star was trying to do like the finishing blow to Shigaraki, we saw that he was having like that internal mind struggle with All for One and that their mind started to melt. And as he was like resisting her order he started to remember like his childhood home and then his hair started to grow and then like electricity started to come out of him and apparently there was an explosion as a result of that hopefully on the page we'll see what happens i really want to see if it's that like uh, energy manipulation quirk or whatever shigaraki says he now understands how new order works he says that even though she is the strongest her quirk still has some limits so interesting is he saying that she's the strongest like even above him like is she like currently number one in the verse or something? And the limits here, something that's going to be explained in this chapter, because as cool of a character as Star Stripe is, she's also just as a controversial one, I guess. He noticed that there is a limit on her super strength, because if there wasn't, he would have been killed in one single punch. So yeah, in the previous chapter, we found out that her super strength made her pretty strong, but not as strong as All Might. You know, what does that mean? I guess like the All Might that we knew in the beginning of the series. So he's pretty much confirming that she's not Saitama strong and that he is now aware of it. So that right there is already kind of giving us a barometer of how far the power of New Order can go on an individual order. Also, he says that she might as well just said, if someone touches the air in that certain area, the person dies instantly. Since this was not the case, he imagines there is a limit to any kind of rule imposed. But first, this video is sponsored by Atlas VPN. Right now, Atlas VPN is running a huge discount it means you can get a three-year subscription for just $1.39 a month with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Time is running out, so get your deal by clicking the link in the video description below. Atlas VPN is a tool that encrypts your data and hides your virtual location. It encrypts all of the data you send but it's also a great help for everyday online situations, such as accessing geo-blocked libraries on streaming services like Netflix, Prime, Hulu, etc. If you're watching this channel, you've probably run into the problem of trying to watch certain anime series, but you're unable to because of said geo-block. Well, you're in luck because Atlas VPN has Japanese VPN servers, so you can access the legendary Japanese Netflix. But like I said before, it all also helps with your security and online presence. So guys, please check out the link in the description for Atlas VPN and you can get that discount for just $1.39 a month. So yeah, going further into the limitations here, I'm sure over the last two weeks, uh, a lot of you and just the audience in general have had a lot of questions about this character and her abilities. And I assume Horikoshi is aware of that, uh, especially with how he uh, has structured this chapter. He then says that the limitation for using an living beings must be the name calling part so yeah we knew that it had like a death note element to it for example the last order didn't work because she assumed that he was tomer shigaraki when in reality he is in an ambiguous state between shigaraki all for one and even tenko shimura so that's interesting we weren't really aware that that was a part of the equation before we just thought it was all for one versus shigaraki but now we got tenko coming in and that's interesting because you know like i said at the end of the previous chapter we saw him remembering his childhood home and i actually recently talked about this on the anime uproar channel regarding the theory of uh, all for one giving tenko uh, the dk quirk when he was a child but there's another kind of fantastical theory regarding tenko that i want to talk about eventually i'll probably make a video about it soon but anyway i think that tenko is being mentioned here for like a specific reason one of the pilots asked star once again what they are going to do since neither new order nor the lasers work she then asks him to send a message to Commander Agbar. The pilot seems to understand what this means and asks if this is really the best thing to do. Star and Stripe says that Shigaraki is no longer just an enemy of Japan. He is a threat on a global scale. 
she needs to kill him right now. So what's basically happening here is Shigaraki is being promoted from disaster level dragon to disaster level god. The pilot remembers the moment he met Star. She says, from today on, I'm going to take care of you all. Let's die together, bros. Okay, so uh, I guess death flags just being thrown right in our face. I mean, I already talked about how I think All for One is gonna take her quirk, but I guess this means she's also gonna die too. He then gives an order for everyone else to back off. Star and Stripe create a new order. The atmosphere will be solidified into a shape that is 100 times my size. We then see a huge aura forming next to her. Shigaraki comments that although he can't see it, he knows there is something there. This aura uses an attack called Fist Bump to the Earth, an enormous punch that hits Shigaraki. So Horikoshi's one-upping of Star's orders continue because she's pretty much making like a Susano from Naruto here, and it's just as cool as you think it is. She knows that accumulating damage will not be enough to defeat him since he can heal himself. She won't be able to find out his real name either, so she'll have to beat him to a pulp. She knows that accumulating damage will not be enough to defeat him, so she'll have to beat him to a pulp. Huh? At this point, she claps her hands and the aura does the same, creating an impact that throws Shigaraki even farther. So I guess she did like a Hulk clap here. Even with that in mind, she knows that it will be a difficult task because he is very resistant. So she asks the pilots to shoot their lasers at her. The next order she gives is the lasers will solidify into a single beam. This single huge laser is wielded by the aura of Star and Stripe, who holds it with both hands and puts pushes it down with all her strength. This technique is called Unified Laser with Max Output Caronis. Oh my God. So let me just say that I was completely wrong with my prediction at the end of the previous chapter. I thought that we saw the peak of her abilities and that All For One was probably gonna take her quirk uh, you know, at some point in this chapter, but no, Horikoshi decided to continue the incredible run of this character and the use of her ability, because this is amazing. Like, I hate to sound like a broken record, but just when you think it can't get better, he somehow keeps finding a way to take it up another notch. The pilots think it's over, but Star says that this blow is just to hold him back. If Shigaraki could be defeated by an attack of this level, then Endeavor would have been able to finish him off back in the war. So is that confirming that this is just as strong as the prominence burn? Because he did use that on Shigaraki in the war. I guess that's what she's referencing here. Endeavor had him in like the Goku Raditz position and you know gave him the prominence burn and he essentially would have killed him if all for one didn't intervene and then you know counterattack him. It's at this point that she receives a call from this Commander Agbar she mentioned earlier. He says that her recklessness has crossed the line this time and that the penalty will be even more severe than a revocation of her hero license. She says she doesn't care about this and asks him if he has finished the preparations. Agbar confirms he has already told Japan that they should be arriving soon. He says even though Star is reckless, this recklessness is what makes their country really shine. On the last page, he says even All Might couldn't arrest this villain. It's your time to overcome come him, Kathy. Okay, so star name reveal there, but also that's not true. All Might arrested him twice. All for one at least. We then see that several missiles are headed towards the place where the fight is taking place. They are called the new hypersonic intercontinental missiles, Tiamat. End of chapter. So I guess that's why she called Admiral Akbar here because he's sending a bunch of hypersonic intercontinental missiles. And I guess they're as powerful as uh, we're led to believe they are. So I assume that either this is going to work out in Shigaraki's favor or something bad is going to happen here that's not going to benefit anyone. But let me know what you think about this chapter in the comments. And if you liked the video guys, please give it a like and please subscribe if you haven't already. Have a great day. I'll see you in the next one.